We're gonna start off today by setting up Devise inside of this brand new Rails app. We're then going to create a basic post scaffold where each post belongs to a user and a user has many posts. We'll then go into the controller, say that you have to be logged in for everything except for the index and the show. And then we're gonna set up our integration tests to uh, do the sign in and sign out logic that we need. So let's start by adding Devise. I'm gonna full screen this. I'm just gonna say bundle add Devise. I'm gonna clear my console and then I'll say Rails G Devise colon install. And now I'm gonna do a Rails G Devise user to create my user model. Next, I'll say Rails G scaffold. I'll create a post, give each post a title, give it a body of type text and a user colon references. Now I'm gonna run a Rails DB colon migrate command to migrate the database. And now that's done, let me go ahead and run a Rails S to start the server. I'm gonna exit out of this full screen real quick. And I'm gonna come over to our config and our routes.rb. I'm just gonna set the root real quick to be the post controller index action. That's just so that I have something to test with. I'm gonna come over to the localhost port 3000 where we have our basic application. All I wanna do is make sure that when I click on new post, I get redirected if I'm not logged in. So I'm gonna come into controllers and the post controller, and I'll just set this up real fast. Let me full screen this. We'll start with a before action where we say authenticate user, and then I'm gonna say accept, and we don't wanna do this for index or show. That takes care of that part of the logic. The next part is inside of this create. We wanna say at post.user equals current underscore user, which of course is why we're authenticating for this action. And then down here, we don't need to pass in the user ID because we're just using the current user. So we'll keep the user ID out of these params. Once that's done, I'm gonna come over here, refresh, and I'm gonna click on new post, and it'll force me to redirect to the sign in page. So now, reasonably, I would expect the test to fail if I try to do a Rails test because I can't uh, create the post without logging in. So if we scroll up here, I'm expecting some kind of email error. Uh, and yeah, it's gonna say unique constraint failed user's email. So if we come into our tests, which is down here, our test folder and our fixtures and our user, this is where we're creating our basic users. So when we run our tests, it's trying to create these two uh, user accounts, one and two. Well, the first one needs to have an email and we're gonna give this one an email of test at case.com. You actually don't need to give this a password because it doesn't care about the implementation details of a user. It just cares that you can have a user. I'm gonna create a second one and I'm gonna call this one dean at example.com. Uh, this isn't of course the best test practice because you don't wanna name your stuff after your, your developers, but I'm gonna name this one dean and give it an email of dean at example.com just so that you can see uh, which variable I'm using here. Because I get a little bit confused when I start using one everywhere or two everywhere. So I have this Dean, I'm now gonna come into my post. And in here you can see for the first post, it's giving it a title, a body, and it's saying the user is one. And in the second post, it's giving it a title and a body and it's saying the user is two. So let me try to run a Rails test and we'll see if it has an issue with that two not existing. Right here, you can see foreign key violations in your fixture data, uh, make sure you're not referring to labels that don't exist on associations. So let me change this to Dean and run my Rails test again. So now you can see we're getting some different errors. And here it's telling us that it expected a response of 200, which if we go over to our HTTP response, 200 codes, 200s usually mean okay. So those are the good ones. And the 300s are usually a redirect. So what's happening? Well, it expected a 200 when it tried to go to post controller should get edit. So when it tried to go to the edit action, it expected a 200 response, which meant okay, but instead it got a 300. Well, of course, if you try to edit a post, it'll redirect you to the login page, which is our 300 response. So to fix this, we have to come into our test and our controllers and our post controller, and we wanna make sure we're signed in. The way that we can do this, if you followed along with the API tutorials, is you can actually say sign underscore in, and then you can uh, grab the user you wanna sign into. So I'll say sign in users parentheses colon Dean, which is from that fixture that we created earlier. If I can find it. 
So it's coming from this fixture right here. The issue is if we try to run this, the sign in method probably doesn't exist yet. Yeah, so we got a whole bunch of errors there. Uh, and the, the basic idea is we have to actually import the integration test helpers for devise. So let's come over to the test helper. And down here below the fixtures, we just want to say include device colon colon test colon colon integration helpers. We'll save that. And now if we try to run a Rails test, you'll see that all of these pass. But of course, we still want to be able to get the index and we want to be able to uh, go to the show page if we're not logged in. So in order to do that, we're going to come into each of these and we're just going to say sign out. And we're going to sign out a specific user, which is just going to be Dean. So we'll grab this one from the index and we'll come into the show and we'll do the same thing. And then we can run a Rails test. And now we can see that we're signed out of both of those and our test still passes. But for the rest of these, we're signed in uh, and we're able to operate as we would expect in our controller. So of course, in any of these tests, if you want to use this test helper right here, this include device test, let's say you need this in some random test you're creating somewhere else, you're going to need to make sure that you're requiring test helper, or you can actually just grab this and import it wherever you want. In, oops, inside of your class, uh, you can just include your device test integration helpers and it'll work just as expected. So if you do need to sign in anywhere, that's the easiest way to do it. So real quick, I was just going through while editing and I realized that there was a case here that I didn't cover. Uh, it's really not that big of a deal, but if you want to be thorough in how you're testing everything, you should really be going through like here where we have the should get new, we should say should get new if signed in and then you can copy this and you can do the same for if signed out then we should not get new and in here we can just call sign out users dean and now if we run a rails test this will still fail but it'll fail because it expected a success but it got a redirect and the way that you can fix this is right here we have the assert response you can just pass in the redirect uh, you're not really testing where it redirects you to because that could change, but you're just assuming that this will redirect. Now, if we run a Rails test, this should pass, which it does. And this, it might not always be necessary to do a test like this, but if you have an application where this could scale and this is going to be less a Rails talk and more just a, a software developer perspective as someone that like had to lead a team before, as your application scales, these small edge cases where even not for the new, just consider the create, right? If I'm a junior developer, I just joined your team, you tell me to fix something. Maybe you want me to add in some functionality to create a post, right? I come into the post controller uh, and in the post controller, I can't get it to work. And then at some point during my, my mucking about, I just add create to the exceptions here. So I can now access the create method without being signed in. I don't realize it. I'm not testing for it. And then I push my changes, all the tests pass. And this, this could very easily just get overlooked. It sounds ridiculous, but this is it happens so much in actual code bases, it's infuriating. You don't want to test to the point where you're slowing down your test suite with every possible uh, oopsie that a junior dev can create. But some of these things where like you'll notice if you can't go to new, but you might not notice if you can't go to create, that might be a good one to test just because that's not a problem you'll run into now, but it is a problem you could run into later when the junior dev goes, well, I mean, you don't need this. And the person who maybe you created this, you don't work there anymore. This can then become a, a bit of an issue. I'm not advocating for you to test every action in your controller. I'm just saying if you would like to, here's how you can do it. 
with this assert response redirect and that it might not be you that breaks it. It might be the junior dev that joins the team four years from now after you leave who thinks they know better than you. Uh, so maybe, you know, teach them a lesson by testing for uh, what, what they're planning on doing then. It's not always necessary, but sometimes that defensive coding is a good idea. That's going to do it for this tutorial. Uh, if you're interested in seeing how to create a mobile application with Rails, I have a video covering that on the screen right now.